Hello and welcome to Module 7, Data Networking Fundamentals. Once again, I'm Ted Chandler, your online course instructor. You have already learned many things about networks, such as communications channels, binary coding, multiplexing, and packet switching. Recall that every communications channel has a source, a transmitter, a transmission media, a receiver, and a destination. Also recall that a telephone has a separate transmitter and receiver. But most data channels have transceivers, or a combined transmitter and receiver. And the transmitter encodes a stream of data and sends it to the transmission media in a format that the receiver can interpret. All these concepts apply to a data network as well as to a telephone network. So let's start Chapter 7, Data Network Fundamentals. In this tutorial, you will learn to first discuss basic networking concepts, including the elements common to all client-server networks. Next, you'll be able to provide examples of multiple network services. You'll also be able to describe the differences between LANs, MANs, and WANs. You'll be able to understand the functions of each layer of the OSI model, describe the purpose of protocols and list several types of protocols, and finally, you'll be able to recognize the core protocols and addressing schemes for the TCP IP suite. Now let's take a review of some basic networking concepts and terminology. Workstations on a network typically share data, programs, and devices through a central computer called a server. Servers stored shared data and programs on their hard disks and perform management functions. A network that uses a server to enable clients to share data, data storage, space, and devices is known as a client-server network. The purpose for using networks is to share programs, data, and devices such as printers or fax machines, all of which are known as resources. Network services can be ca categorized as follows. Print services, communication services, mail services, internet services, and management services. Now let's review some basic networking terminology. A node is a device, for example, a server, client, or printer that can receive a transmission over a network. An address is used to receive data. Each node must have a unique address or identifying number. This is usually called a physical address or media access control address or MAC address, MAC address. This unique physical address is usually encoded into the NIC by the NIC's manufacturer. Host is another term for a device on a network that has a unique address. And a protocol is a rule that governs how the parts of a network work together or interface. A local area network, or a LAN, is a network of computers and other devices that is confined to a relatively small space, such as one building or even one office, and it, is also, and it also could be over a much larger area like a campus. A metropolitan area network, or MAN, is a network that connects clients and servers in, a multiple, in multiple buildings in a region or in a city, for an example. Wide Area Network, or WAN, is a network that consists of two or more geographically distinct LANs or MANs, such as this example between cities across the country. Of course, the largest WAN is the Internet. To connect users from around the globe, the Internet relies on a hierarchical structure of connection points. At the bottom of the Internet hierarchy are local Internet Service Providers, or ISPs. 
Local ISPs connect to regional ISPs, which form the next layer in the hierarchy. Regional ISPs connect to the national network service providers via network access points, or NAPs. NAPs are where the largest network service providers aggregate, aggregate and exchange Internet traffic. The Internet is a unique wide area network, not only because of its size, but also because of its diversity. It may transmit confidential information between offices within the same organization, or it may transmit public records to anyone who requests them. To connect users from around the globe, the Internet relies on a hierarchical structure of connection points, just as the PSTN relies on a hierarchical uh, system of central offices. An Internet service provider, ISP, is the company that operates a network and provides consumers with a link to the Internet. Here is the telecommunication carrier's global network used to carry the Internet. In the early 1980s, ISO created the Open System Interconnection, or OSI, model for understanding and developing computer-to-computer -computer communications. This model divides communication systems into seven layers. They are the physical layer, data link, network, transport, session, presentation, and finally the application layer, or one through seven. Each layer has its own set of functions and interacts with the layers below and above it. The physical layer is the lowest, or the first layer, of the OSI model. Protocols at the physical layer generate and detect voltages so as to transmit and receive signal, signals carrying data. The physical layer sets the data transmission rate and monitors data error rates though it does not provide error correction. The second layer of the OSI model, the data link layer, divides data it receives from the network layer into frames that can be transmitted by the physical layer. It also provides error checking information and assigns physical addresses to the data frames. The network layer, the third OSI model layer, manages addressing and routing data based on addressing pat patterns of usage and availability. Routers belong to the network layer because they use this information to intelligently direct data from sender to receiver. The transport layer is primarily responsible for ensuring that data is transferred from point A to point B reliably and without errors. For example, the transport layer ensures that data is sent and received in the same order or sequence. It also establishes the layer of error checking. The session layer establishes and maintains communication between two nodes on the network. It can be considered the traffic cop of network communications. The term session refers to a connection for data exchange between two parties. It is often used in the context of terminal and mainframe communications. The presentation layer, or six OSI model layer, serves as a translator between the application and the network. At the presentation layer, data is formatted in a schema that the network can understand. This format varies with the type of network used. The presentation layer also manages data encryption and decryption, such as a scrambling of passwords. The top, or seventh layer of the OSI model is the application layer. It provides interfaces to the software that enables it to use network services. Some of the services provided by the application layer include file transfer, file management, and message handling for electronic mail. Note the illustration on the right which demonstrates the flow of data from one computer to another.
The term protocol is often used to refer to a group or suite of individual protocols that work together. The protocols within a suite are assigned different tasks, such as data translation, data handling, error checking, and addressing. Each protocol corresponds to a different layer of the OSI model. Protocols that can span more than one LAN segment are routable because they carry network layer and addressing information that can be interpreted by a router. Not all protocols are routable, however. Some well-known protocol suites include NetBuoy and NetBIOS, IPX, XPX, SPX, AppleTalk, and TCP IP. The Transmission Control Protocol Internet Protocol TCP IP suite is a routable, flexible protocol that has its origins in the ARPANET, the precursor to the Internet. TCP IP is the protocol in which all Internet traffic relies. It is also the protocol of choice for many private LANs and WANs. One of the greatest advantages to using TCP IP relates to its status as a routable protocol, which means that it carries network addressing information that can be interpreted by the routers. TCP IP is also a flexible protocol running on any combination of networks operating, network operating systems or network media. Certain sub-protocols of the TCP IP suite, called TCP IP core protocols, operate in the transport or, or network layers of the OSI model and provide basic services to the protocols in other layers of the four-layer model. These are, proto these are protocols required for any data transmission that uses TCP IP. Of all the core protocols in the suite, TCP and IP are the most significant. In this module, we have covered the following main points. Workstations on a network typically share data, programs, and devices through a central computer called a server. A network that uses a server to enable clients to share data data storage, space, and devices is known as a client-server network. The main purpose for using networks is to share programs, data, and devices such as printers or fax machines. The OSI model divides communication systems into seven layers. They are the physical layer, data link layer, network, transport, session, presentation, and application layers. TCP IP is the primary protocol used on the Internet. This completes Module 7. Please take Quiz 7 and I'll see you again in Module 8, The Physical Media.